Alright guys, how to come back again today? Hope you're doing that and enjoying your day so far. A bombshell dropping last night with potential major implications for this next phase of Rostermania. We know that Toronto are interested in potentially selling Insight and Kleenex because they can't afford the salaries this current roster demands, but Scrappy does not seem happy at all with it playing on a severely nerfed version of this year's team. If they, Toronto, would potentially entertain offers for Scrappy, then we're really talking about a crazy Rostermania period where all 12 teams could feasibly change in some aspect or another. Very much enjoyed to hear your thoughts in the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. Let's dive straight in. Loads of rumours emerging over the last day or so. Bryce Tackler does say that some of the rumours he's seen are utter rubbish. So we'll talk about some that may be legit, may not be legit. But there has been some big pointers the last day or so as to what these teams might do. Especially with regard to Toronto. It's really unfortunate for Toronto in a way. The fact that they've won something every single year of the CDL so far. And it looks like they're going to be falling out as it stands of that top contender bracket unless they can build a great team on low budget which it seems like they're now going to be in that position there was also this from Bantz yesterday who took a few days off to tweet about you know to think about champs and then tweeted about it and I believe this tweet here from Mike he DM'd me that actually this tweet got liked by Bantz before he then unliked it so like Bantz likes to bait around a bit so don't read too much into this but I think honestly Bantz to Boston doesn't feel like um you know crazy out there right idea if he still does want to compete and it seems like he does until next season he says so definitely it seems like Bantz is planning to return it yet again quickly on Thieves as well gotta say right if you see something from Jacob Hale it's definitely got some validity behind it when you see things from these like Intel accounts you never really know if it's actually legit or not but the rumor emerging here around Kenny is that he is going to be staying on Thieves right which obviously makes sense if you're losing Dryas on Envoy and Kenny's been part of that Thieves culture for years and he's on his day still a very impactful player You'd expect Octane to still be there as well. I don't expect Octane to be leaving to another team based on what we said the other day. But um, this rumor was emerging. I believe this actually initially came from one of the Boston Breach like fan accounts. And then Pascaro tweeted about it with this rumor of Kenny, Insight, Kleenex and Pred. Now, I thought Thieves were trying to cut back budget this year. But if this is the case, most certainly not. Not sure whether this would leave Octane. I'm sure, you know, maybe we'll get some more clarification on that in the coming days. But um, Insight and Kleenex, I imagine, would want to stay as a duo because they were way back in the Black Ops 4 days on Singularity and they have been since they've been in the CDL together. This would be a very exciting team and it might well be the case that Thieves start to clean up some of these players that these other organisations are looking at but now Scrappy is a potential target. I think it changes up all the questions that we've seen so far and I do think that if Optic go down the route they're doing with Envoy then Thieves Pred is the most likely possibility there as a result and even though Thieves we heard about budget and maybe not spending as much as other teams do because you know they're conscious of cost which is understandable nade shots probably of all the owners in the league i think wants to win more than anybody else so you know fundamentally if there's options there he's going to possibly commit so that's just a weird rumor that's been going around the last 24 hours or so i also wanted to clarify this that i tweeted yesterday because if you guys don't remember last off season optic made changes they dropped dashi they dropped illy it was announced it was all over twitter and the team that they were meant to be forming behind the scenes was going to be Shotzi and Scump with Hydra and Kami. I'm 95 plus percent sure certain that was going to be the team of four. It was talked about by Crone and Jake Hale and obviously Ronnie and talked about it first on the CDL Scum Intel account and said that it was 95% complete and he gets clowned for that. But fundamentally, Optic decided last minute they were going to run it back again. Hydra, I believe, found out the same time the rest of us did that Optic Hydra was not going to be a thing and he was going to be still a free agent because he was a complete free agent last season. Right? There was no buyout involved. Optic definitely could have got him. They didn't get him and honestly at the time a lot of optic fans are very happy about that because hydra's reputation at the time was very much um, under scrutiny there had been all the drama with crim and with drill and the flank episode they did which was absolute chaos and hydra didn't come across the best at certain times of that i certainly think that over the last year he's improved massively as a player as a teammate and also straight up as a winner right but um you know optic hydra could have been a thing they decided to run it back which was obviously looking back a mistake and i believe many of us pointed out at the time 
confirmed that it was a mistake. So they could have had Hydra. They decided not to. They went down that route. But now, Pred's available, right? And Hydra's just had one of the best statistical seasons ever in COD history. And now Pred is available on the market. Still a free agent completely. Seems like he wants to join. But the current rumor is that they're going to pass up on this opportunity again and get Envoy. And that might not be a bad thing, right? As I say in the tweet, it'll undoubtedly be one of the roster decisions of all time. Because, you know, people thought that I made a mistake here. But, like, I said this deliberately because I don't know whether this is good or bad. Like, it's difficult to say. But it does just feel very interesting if in back-to-back off-seasons, Optigiv have the chance to get Hydra and Pred, and they don't get either of those options, and maybe it's going to come back to bite them if they go down this route. But as I say, this might not happen any longer, especially if these Toronto guys are now on the market. It changes so many of the questions, because we've seen the Optic rumors, we've seen the potential Thieves rumors, or whatever's happening there. But if the Toronto guys are available, and there's still another 10 days to go until the players are actually free agents anyway, then it really does blow the bloody doors off, you know. So anyway, Phoenix says, the coach of the Seattle Surge, so long partner, which kind of implies that it's done, right? GG, Seattle are over, and Sib says, business is business. So we don't know what's going to happen to Sib. I know there was some talk about, okay, could Sib and Preds go to Thieves or something? I think that'd be an interesting option. But um, yeah, so who do you think Phoenix is talking about here, so long partner, right? Is he talking to Pred? Is he talking to Sib? Is he talking to bloody everyone? Because who knows who's going to stay on that team for next season? Maybe not too many. This was the big rumor, though, around Toronto. We saw this yesterday that due to financial issues, Toronto were open to offers for both Insight and Kleenex. And this is really just shows the state of the CDL at the moment. The fact that organizations like Toronto, big organization, big fan base, just held a fantastic event out there, of course, that I was fortunate to go to a few weeks ago now. They have won something every year of the CDL. The first year they won, okay, it was an online home series. Next year in Cold War, they won an online Major 2. The next year, they won the kickoff event in Vanguard. And then last year, they won Major 3 of this season, right? So they won quite a lot. But now it seems they're in a position where they just simply cannot sustain the salaries the players are experiencing. And honestly, whose fault is it for this? It's difficult to say. Is it Activision's fault the way they've designed the league? Is it the team's fault over the last several years paying these guys crazy salaries? Like, some of the numbers that Crim6 and others were on even during the Modern Warfare year was just absurd. It had to come down at some point, And I think it slowly has over the last couple of years. But the top teams have still been paying big money to get these players that don't necessarily stream and look some of the streams are gonna have to be turned on this season absolutely in order to potentially compensate for some of the salary losses that these teams are the players are going to be going through and it's now getting to a point where the VC money's drying up they want to see a return and the organizations actually have to come up with a reasonable business model here and not just throwing money at the wall so the top teams will still pay big salaries no doubt about that but a lot of the teams around the top teams that are kind of like in the top five top four team range they are going to start dropping these and therefore the likes of Insight and Kleenex they would be happier to sell those players than they would be to actually maintain them on the current salary they have which is not a good look for the league in general but it does really open the door to some pretty mind-blowing couple of weeks of roster mania here because Scrappy says sad face and Kleenex is like so long type thing again and then Scrappy tweets this out which is like um you know watching from the outside as potentially his Insight his Kleenex disappear off into the sunset and play for Thieves or something while Scrappy is stuck on Toronto playing with a severely reduced team, right? I mean, look, at the end of the day, if they pay Scrappy's salary, whatever it is, and it might not even be that much for Scrappy just because when they signed him before on the deal that they had at the time, he wasn't known to be the absolute superstar MVP level player that he is today. So whatever deal he's on might not be anything stunning compared to some of the other salaries in the league. But if they are to just have Scrappy and then maybe keep Hixie and bring on a couple of other players that aren't at the caliber of Insight and Kleenex, that are, you know, to round out the squads. Scrappy's not going to be happy, right? I mean, the guy just came to the Grand Finals of the World Championship. Okay, he got absolutely bodied by the Bulldog, but still, Toronto and Scrappy will look to push on. Scrap wants revenge for that, I'm sure. Wants to get his ring at some point and probably will get his ring at some point with the talent this guy has. But the issue is, is he going to be stuck there? Jacob Hale says that while it's not potentially guaranteed, it's definitely an option that Ultra could completely squad wipe. And this is the thing. If Scrappy isn't happy, as I, I'm pretty sure this is legit. I don't think they're just baiting around here. I'm pretty sure there is at least something happening where clinics and Insight are likely going to be gone and Scrappy's sitting there thinking, well, if you guys are gone, you know, why don't they entertain offers for me as well? And they could well do, right? I mean, if Scrappy says to the organization and to the management, like, hey, guys, if you are going to sell my teammates off here, you might as well entertain offers to sell me off as well because I'm not going to be happy with how it is. And obviously, Scrappy would probably command in terms of a buyout the highest of any of those guys. 
Wizards. They wouldn't want to lose him, and going into this season, I'm sure, like, I expected for sure Scrubby to still be on Toronto, but right now it's not a guarantee any longer. We don't know what's happening with Toronto financially, and if they could potentially say, you know what, well, Scrappy, he had a good couple of years here with the organization. We've done a great job over the last few years bringing up players from the academy system. They could try and run it back and do it again. And I'm sure there would be big offers for Scrappy coming from the top teams. There's also an increase in the league minimum salary for next season, going from 55 to 25 to 58 815 based on, I'm guessing, inflationary figures and stuff like that. So yeah, the Vegas Legion owner is going to be fuming about this one. But apparently, up to nine of the 12 teams will have some players players, or at least could have, some players on the minimum salaries. So you're assuming that's not optic or phase, and you'd think that's probably not thieves, because let's be honest, 58 grand, if you're living out there in LA after the taxes and with all the costs out there, doesn't really get you that far out there, to be honest. So, um, you know, I'd imagine it's not those three teams. And then you're looking at maybe New York, but surely New York won't have any other minimums. So, but it's got to be one of those teams if it's up to nine. And then Toronto, most certainly, it seems based on this, will have people on minimums next season. So, um, you know, it's not a great look, to be honest, with the state and the health of the league, but um, it's probably an inevitable correction. So we enter here into a little bit of a standoff, right, as Ben Janasim says, where top unrestricted free agents are keeping their options open. They can't sign for some time and many contracted players are thinking about moves elsewhere but they can't necessarily execute on that yet so if scrappy is now an option what team might well give him a go because optic back at the start of the year this is in january they you know were making comments about scrap as an individual and like how exciting he is as a player and obviously he's only just grown over the course of the season and looking at the other teams what team could improve from this guy because clinix and insight will get offers but if scrappy wants to leave and they will entertain offers to sell him which they might might well do. That throws a spanner in the works of all of the conversations we've had, like Scrappy to FaZe. What about that? Scrappy to FaZe for Slasher. Selium, Scrappy, Simba Beezy. I mean, that sounds nice. Thieves as well could be an option there. Even I was thinking the subliners, not how wild that is. But, um, you know, if there's one weak link on that subliners team, it's Priest. And now not, there's no weak links. They just won the world championship, right? But we know how difficult it is historically to win champs and then actually do anything spectacular in the following season. If Scrappy is available, if subliners have got the budget, would they think, you know what, could we upgrade that role? I mean, I think they'd be wild to do it. I don't expect them to do it. But the thoughts might cross their mind. And then you've got Optic, right? I mean, we know that Draza is meant to be coming in for Ghosty, which is very questionable, right? I said that I kind of liked it yesterday and I stand by that opinion. But if Scrappy might be available in that flex position, I mean, that's another option there. So yeah, it could get pretty wild here. And we don't know what's going to happen to Insight and Clinics right now. But if Scrappy's not happy and he wants to leave, then there could be some serious options. And maybe it adds more credence to this idea from Sasha that he's trying to fight off all the challenges for his spot on phase. And I think that he probably will be successful in doing so. But right now it's not guaranteed. And Toronto might say, you know what, let's just go for a guy like Abuza because Abuza pretty much this year in challenges had a very similar year to how Scrappy's year in challenges went last year right before he stepped up to the starting team maybe they think you know what we're not going to spend much cash bring Abuza in build another team around that from the challenger side and build up another great squad of players and that might be what Toronto plan to do for the next few years and effectively call it a day with this current iteration after getting bodied in the grand finals of champs so very much in Twitter your thoughts in the comment section below hit the like button if you enjoyed Subscribe if you're new, take care, and I'll see you next time. Words and more, whatever it's called. For he them, seems like a good bro, he, isn't he? He talks a lot of shit. Yeah, so what? But like he's 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 dapping up his his his, uh, his, his but, teammates from before. He's well spoken. I I I fuck with him. But that is the mentality that you have to have. Like you gotta come in, you gotta come in firing, and that's why it's like I tip it.